Residents at uh, Northeast Georgia Medical Center in Gainesville, and the case that I'm presenting today is cardiogenic shock in the setting of myocarditis due to COVID-19. Um, not as interesting as it was when I first saw the case, but this case was a little interesting just based off of like the clinical course. Um, so overall, learning objectives just to understand myocarditis as a complication of COVID-19, and then. Um, to kind of understand the effect a patient's anatomy may have on their overall treatment. So just intro, again, uh, COVID-19 has been associated with multiple cardiac complications, including heart failure, arrhythmias, and myocarditis. The myocarditis itself is thought to be related to an inflammatory process created by the cytokine storm. And um, we're basically going to go over a case that involves a 19-year-old female who's overall pretty healthy um, that presented with COVID myocarditis. So in the case itself, again, I had a 19-year-old female, fairly healthy. She presented initially to the ED with complaints of nausea, vomiting, and she had a fever that had been ongoing for five days. Um, on presentation, her vitals were significant for her heart rate up in the 160s. Um, she was hypotensive, um, blood pressure was 79 over 62. And then exam wise, again, she was tachycardic, fairly ill appearing, um, had some intermittent episodes of confusion. Labs for her were significant for a white blood cell count of 7.2. Her lactic was fairly elevated at 7.2. Um, we checked a troponin for her, high sensitivity one came back elevated at over 1200. And then her pro BNP was also elevated at um, a little over 4,000. And so we ended up checking a viral panel and the only thing that came back positive was just COVID-19. So she was admitted um, and then underwent an echo which showed that her ejection fraction was fairly reduced. It was 25 to 30%. And then she had a pericardial effusion as well. Um, she started to become a little bit hemodynamically unstable. Um, interventional cardiology was also consulted. They decided just from this cardiogenic uh, shock standpoint to go ahead and attempt for um, impella placement. However, her anatomy was kind of uh, complicating things. Her femoral artery was very small. So they were trying to either do impella or an intraaortic balloon pump. The only thing that they were um, eventually able to place was the intraaortic balloon pump. And then she was actually transferred to um, a different facility in the same hospital system for a higher level of care, which is when I pretty much saw her. So when she arrived at our hospital, again, she had the balloon pump in. Um, she was starting to have like increased presser requirements and then became very unstable and ended up being intubated. Also during that course, we ended up noticing that she was um, having concerns of limb ischemia. So we consulted vascular surgery and they basically recommended that this balloon pump be removed. So after like a interdisciplinary meeting, um, the decision was finally made to try VA ECMO for her. But again, with her femoral artery being so small, um, they weren't able to really cannulate. So we had to call cardiothoracic surgery for essential cannulation. During that procedure, she became um, coagulopathic, looked like she went into DIC. She was transfused with multiple products, but eventually um, went into asystole and passed away. So as far as the figures that we have, the first one is um, showing, again, just an image from her echo with the pericardial um, effusion. I'm sorry, I see the slides as pleural effusion. Um, and then figure two, again, is just showing her anatomy from when they were trying to um, place the impella and then ultimately place the balloon pump for her. So, Discussion-wise, um, so the true incidence of COVID-19 myocarditis is not completely known just because a lot of the case did go underreported um, during that time frame. The exact mechanism is unclear, but again, a lot of this seems to be immune-mediated um, after the virus enters the cell via spike protein. 
So the image that's kind of there, figure three, um, shows kind of like the proposed mechanism where the virus itself has this um, has this spike protein that kind of binds to the ACE2 uh, receptors. And this pretty much allows for the virus to enter the cell. And then this attacks, obviously, the myocytes. There's um, activation of all these cytokines. You can get the cytokine storm and ultimately leads to the inflammation and myocarditis. So treatment, again, is mostly, uh, mostly supported. And then, again, if they start to decompensate, just um, giving them that mechanical circulatory support for all of our critically ill patients. The other treatment modalities that I'd seen, um, as far as like steroids, uh, tocilizumab, and IVIG, again, they were just not very well studied. So um, all in all, this was just again, recognizing cardiogenic shock in the setting of um, myocarditis due to COVID-19. The case itself was just a little interesting given her, her anatomy and it kind of complicated her overall management. And I think that is it for me. Awesome, thank you for a wonderful presentation. Um, does anyone have any questions? All right, my only question is, is there any reason they may have potentially thought the left femoral artery was narrow on cardiac cath? Um, like, is there any sort of pathophysiological explanation or just more or so an anatomical variant? I think it was just an anatomical variant. Um, and it was like bilateral, both sides, the exact same. And then just her overall stature, she was a very, uh, she was young, very small. So Again, I don't think they had a very uh, good reason as to why that femoral artery was so small. Okay, awesome, thank you. Uh -huh.